A venue supermarts, popularly known as DMART, listed on the Indian stock exchanges in March 2017. As against the issue price of 299 per share, the stock listed at 604 rupees per share. At the end of its listing day, its price was 642. So it delivered a cool 115% in one day for those who got the IPO allotment. Fast forward to today. As of December 6, 2024, the stock price is 3806. So if someone bought DMART post its listing at double the issue price, such a person would have still made a gain of 530% in less than 8 years. That's a CAGR of about 27% per annum. And if someone who got the IPO allotment sold out DMART after listing, thinking that doubling the money in one day is good enough, such a person would be deeply regretting his decision now. Well, this is history. Now, Vishal Megamart, another retail chain, has come up with its IPO. The company is raising 8,000 crore and the IPO is open from December 11 to December 13, 2024. Now, can it be as successful as Avenue Supermarts with its listing and post-listing performance? We will try to find out in this video. Hello and welcome to ET Money's YouTube channel. Today, we will analyze Vishal Megamart's IPO so that you can decide whether or not you should invest in it. Now, this video is divided into certain sections which are on your screen. But before I begin, a quick reminder. If you aren't already a subscriber, Please do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so you never miss a video from us. Alright, on your screen are the key details of Vishal Megamart IPO. The company is raising 8000 crore. Now this makes it the fourth largest IPO of this year after Hyundai, Swiggy and NTPC Green Energy. Now we have covered these IPOs and many others too. You can find their videos in the IPO playlist on our channel. The link is in the description. Now, the entire 8000 crore is an offer for sale or OFS and there is no fresh issue component. Now, what's the difference between the two you ask? In a fresh issue, the money raised goes to the company, but in an OFS, it goes to the selling shareholders. Now, the IPO opens on December 11 and closes on December 13. So that's the usual three day period. The price band is 74 to 78 rupees per share. The lot size is 190 shares for retail investors. So at the upper price band, one lot costs 14,820. Now, there won't be any change in the pre and post issue shareholding as no fresh shares are being issued. The count stands at about 451 crore shares. Now, post the IPO, the promoter holding in the company will come down to 76% from the current 96%. Okay, these were the key IPO details. Let's now talk about the company's business and the industry outlook. Now, the business of Vishal Megamart needs no introduction. There's a high chance you have visited a store too. Now, the company sells a diverse range of merchandise catering to the middle and lower middle strata with a focus on variety, affordability, quality and convenience. Its product portfolio is divided across three major categories, apparel, general merchandise and FMCG goods. Now, as of September 2024, apparels contributed 45% of the total revenues from these three categories. General merchandise and FMCG contributed about 28% and 27% each. Now the apparel category comprises exclusively of the company's own brands, while in a general merchandise and FMCG goods categories, it sells its own as well as third party brands too. Overall, the company has 26 own brands across the three categories. For the six months ended September 2024, the company's own brands contributed about 73% of revenue from operations. The contribution by own brands has stayed upwards of 70% for the last three financial years too. Now the company relies on its vendors for the manufacture of its branded products. The in-house design team identifies the products and their designs, creates prototypes together with vendors and then places orders with the vendors for production as per specifications, quality standards and requirements. Now, as of September 2024, the company has a network of 645 stores across 414 cities. The company's material subsidiary, Air Plaza Retail Holdings, operates 643 of the stores on a leasehold basis and the remaining two stores are run by franchises. The company has one central distribution center, one distribution center and 17 regional distribution centers. The company manages the central distribution and the distribution centers while the regional distribution centers are managed by its promoter, Samyat Services LLP, through third parties appointed by them. 
the company is primarily a brick and mortar company as its online sales are very small fraction of the total sales. As of six months ended September 2024, the company's online channel contributed just 1% of the total sale of traded goods. All right, let's now take a look at the industry outlook. According to Red Sea Research, the overall retail market is expected to grow at 9% per annum between 2023 and 2028 to 116 to 124 lakh crore. Of this, the organized retail segment is expected to grow much faster at 20% per annum. Now, within the organized segment, the organized brick and mortar segment is expected to have a growth rate of 19 to 20% per annum. The apparel, journal merchandise and FMCG categories, which are the focus area of Vishal Mega Mart, are expected to grow at 10, 14 and 9% per annum respectively. So, overall, the outlook for retail, organized retail and brick and mortar retail seems quite robust. Vishal Mega Mart's major product categories are also primed for growth for the years to come. Okay, let's now take a look at the company's financials and valuations. Let's first take a look at the company's key financials. The company's revenue have grown from about 5,700 crore to about 8,900 crore over the last two years. That's a growth of 26% per annum. The profits have grown at a faster pace at 51% per annum for 203 crores to 462 crore. The company's cash flow from operations are quite robust too and match well with the profit figure. The company is debt free. Its average operating margin over the last three years is 13.9% and the average ROCE is solid 67%. So the key financial metrics of the company appear quite attractive. Okay, let's also compare the company's key financial and business metrics with its listed peer Avenue Supermarts. In terms of store count, Vishal Mega Mart is ahead of Avenue Supermarts. Demart stores are just three-fifths of Vishal's. But the average Avenue store is more than twice in size than the average Vishal store. Avenue's total retail space is also higher than Vishal's by about 38%. Now, in terms of same store sales growth, an important retail metric, Vishal is decisively ahead of Avenue. But Avenue's inventory days are almost half those of Vishal. This suggests that Avenue sells its inventory much faster than Vishal. These were the business metrics. Next are financial metrics. Now, in terms of market cap, Avenue is seven times bigger than Vishal, a mammoth cap. When his revenue is almost six times that of Vishal and the profit is over five times. But when his large size hasn't impeded its revenue and profit growth. Its revenue growth is higher than that of Vishal. But Vishal beats revenue hands down in profit growth. Now both the companies are debt free and this puts them in strong position. Both in terms of operating margin and ROCE, Vishal is ahead of revenue. Vishal's ROCE is rather outstanding. Now, in terms of PE or price to earnings ratio, both companies have very high multiples, but Vishal is still cheaper than Avenue. Now, since these are high growth stocks, if we check their PE to earnings growth or PEG ratio, Vishal appears much reasonably valued vis-a-vis -vis Avenue. Overall, Vishal matches Avenue quite well and the icing on cake is its cheaper valuations. Okay, so it's not sufficient to analyze the business, industry and financials when it comes to IPO investing. There are also IPO rated metrics that matter too. We talked about these metrics in an earlier video along with some cool hacks to increase your chances of IPO success. I mentioned the video link in the description. You can watch it after this one. Okay, now let's check these crucial IPO related metrics in case of Vishal Megamart's IPO. The first is a split between the fresh issue and offer for sale or OFS. An IPO issue can have two components, fresh issue and offer of sale or OFS. In a fresh issue, the amount raised goes to the company and hence is deployed in the business. In an OFS, the amount doesn't go to the company, but to the selling shareholders. So from an investor's point of view, the larger the proportion of the fresh issue, the better. Now, in the case of Vishal Megamart's IPO, the entire issue is an OFS. So the company won't benefit from the IPO proceeds. The selling shareholder is the promoter, Samyat Services LLP, which is selling 103 crore of its own shares. Now, 100% OFS hints at the opportunistic behavior on part of the promoter amid a raging bull market. The next criteria is outstanding litigation against the company. Now, the outstanding litigation against a company tells us about the quality of corporate governance and also the financial liabilities a company may have to face. 
against Vishal Mega Mart, the outstanding litigation amount stands at about 6 crore. Against its subsidiaries, the amount is about 40 crore and there is no litigation against the promoters. Overall, the company's track record is quite clean and the ongoing litigation proceedings don't pose a threat given the company's size, profitability and scale. The next criteria is contingent liabilities. A contingent liability is a possible obligation that may or may not occur depending on a future event. So low to nil contingent liabilities are desirable. Now Vishal Mega Mart has contingent liabilities of about 61 crores. This amount is also not substantial. So that's good. The next metric is the price at which shares were issued in the last one year. If a company has issued shares in recent times before the IPO at a price much lower than the IPO price, that's often a negative sign as it hints at steep IPO pricing. Now Vishal Megamat has not issued any equity shares in the last one year. Neither have its promoters acquired shares in the company in the last one year. Interestingly, the other promoter of the company, Kedara Capital Fund 2 LLP, doesn't own any shares in the company. The next metric is risk factors mentioned by the company. It's customary for companies to disclose as many risk factors as applicable in their RHP. Now, many of these are like disclaimers or standard statements. Okay, let's take a look at the, some of the prominent risk factors for Vishal Megamart. First, the company doesn't manufacture its own branded products but relies on vendors for manufacturing which exposes the company to external risk. Second, the company has received two directives with requests for information from the Enforcement Directorate. Any adverse outcome in this matter can result in further investigations, legal proceedings and penalties. Third, the company's stores are concentrated in states of UP, Karnataka and Assam. It has 226 of its 645 stores in these states. So any adverse development in these states can impact the company's business. Fourth, there has been delays in payment of statutory dues by the company such as towards the EPFO and the Income Tax Department. Fifth, the company is just one central distribution center and a regional risk to it can severely affect the company's operations. Overall, there are 60 risk factors that the company has mentioned in its RHP. I would encourage you to take a look at them. So these were the important IPO related metrics. Let's now summarize what we discussed in the video so that you can decide whether to invest in it or no. Let's start with company strengths and positives. First is the brand name. Vishal Megamart is a popular brand today that already has a space in consumer's mind. The company's 70% revenue comes from its own brands, so this provides it more control and reduces its dependence on third-party products. The industry outlook is robust and growth should not be a concern. The company's financials are solid too. The valuations appear stretched in absolute terms but are reasonable in compared to Avenue Supermarts. The company has a good track record as far as litigation and contingent liabilities are concerned. So overall, the company ticks many boxes. But what are the areas of concern? Well, the company doesn't have manufacturing capabilities of its own and relies heavily on its vendors. This dependence can be a source of pain from time to time. The competition is quite high and the business mode is quite weak. There are multitude of alternatives available to consumers today, especially e-commerce companies like Amazon and Flipkart. The IPO is entirely an OFS, so the entire 8000 crore will go into the promoter's pocket. Many investors may find it unsettling. With this, we have told you what you need to know about this IPO. Now it's your turn to tell us and your fellow investors whether you will apply in this IPO or not and why. And with this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful and if it did, please share it with your friends and family. I'll be back soon with another video. Till then, take care. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.